Brought to you by Sylvania, for half a century a quality name in incandescent bulbs, fluorescent tubes and fixtures, photo lamps, radio and television sets, radio and television tubes and electronic devices. Yes, for homes, offices, schools and factories, Sylvania. Let's all play beat the clock. Now here is America's number one clock watcher. Bud Snyder! Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Beat the Clock, the show where you have the time of your life playing against time for big-time prizes. Now let's have the pleasure of re-meeting our holdover contestants from last week. Hi there, nice to see you back. You. It was Mr. and Mrs. Jack R. Helsel, is that right? H-E-L-S-E-L -E -E of Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, let's see, you're a salesman, as I recall. What's the company you're salesman? salesman for? I'm with Ann School Films and Cameras, the all-weather film for guaranteed pictures. Oh, man, get that plug in right off the bat there. You ought to get a raise now for that one, Jack. And you're a housewife, is that right, Miss Helsel? Right. What about children? We have two little girls. Oh, yes. Did we give you the Roxanne dolls last yes, week? How'd they like them? Oh, they're beautiful. How old are you, little girls? Well, we're going to save them until they get a little older. Oh, they're a little young for that yet, huh? Well, I'm sorry. If you girls are listening, forget it. Just wait till you're older and you'll find out all about it. Well, Mr. and Ms. Helsel, our bonus tonight is worth $500. This can happen to you, this can happen to anybody but me. But it can happen to any of our contestants when the bell rings. I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, that's the one that tries the bonus worth $500 in cash tonight. You had gotten through your $100 clock and are about to try the $200 when time ran out. So I'm awful glad we enticed you back from Baltimore, Maryland. Let's come over and see what we have in store on the $200 clock. Now, if you pause with me right here for just a second, I want to show you that we have made a rather large size set of children's alphabet blocks. You see them? Now, over here is another stack, and you can stand by those because that's your supply. Now, in each of these stacks, there are the letters D-O-N-E, done. There's a complete D-O-N-E in that stack. There's a complete D-O-N-E in this stack. But we want you to work together, and using the blocks from either side or both, we don't care which, spell out the one word, D-O-N-E, so that the letters face the audience. In other words, therefore, the D would be facing out that way and would be over here. To the left of it, the O, then the N, then the E. That's the idea? You can tell each other what letter you're going after or what, what you're for, which one you've got or anything. You don't talk to each other through the whole thing. Just spell out the one word, D-O-N-E, from right to left, because you'd have to make it right for the audience. Now let's take a look and see how many seconds you have. Uh, 55 seconds. Would you sit down on the floor, please? Would you sit down on the floor here, too? Now, put your hands on the floor alongside you, because that's the way you're going to propel yourself around. You have to use only your feet to spell this out. Do you understand? <laughs> only your feet. You can knock them down, do anything you want, but you must remain sitting. You can ooch around on your, well, you know, ooch around. Use your hands, do the crab walk, anything you want, but use only your feet to move the letters around and spell out the word done. Do you understand? Talk to each other all you want to. You have 55 seconds. Are you ready? Go. Hurry up. Come on. Find what you want. You got the deep facing the audience? Not with your hands. Can't touch with your hands. That's the boy. You got the D and the O, have you? Let me take a look here. Yeah. No, you got an F here. You got to get a D here. Hurry up. Here's one back here. Here's a D right here. See it? There it is. Come on, move around. Hurry up. You get the end, boy. That's it. Get it in line there. Come on, bounce around. It's good for you. Now we need an E. Got an E there? She's got an E. Hurry up there. Get it over there. That's it, boy. Get it in place. Get the others out of the way. Get it in place there. Hurry up. All right! Stop the clock! Good job! <laughs> we did a little work out there, didn't we? <laughs> that was a fine job. Come on back over here. we find out what your next problem is in just a very few seconds. Matter of fact, you know, that could be a device we could uh, sell to the average woman at home. That's a good way to reduce, you know. You bounce around there and take off a little weight. Have a lot of fun while you're doing it. 
Well, now, let's see. If the kids are watching, they probably wonder what you were doing there. Now, Mr. Miss Helsel, uh, Jack, you can't help in this one at all. You're up to the jackpot clock, and if you'll just sort of back off over there, hold good thoughts for your wife, though. And uh, Miss Helsel, step up on this little platform, turn around and face the audience, and don't turn back and look until I tell you to. Because behind you now is our jackpot board with all of the words of a famous saying or quotation, and they're all mixed up and out of order. Now, we want you to unmix them. Get them so they spell out the saying that, so that we can identify it, and all this in 20 seconds from the time I say go. Now, don't turn around until I tell you to. Open the curtain. Turn around, take a look. Go. Stop the clock. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Is the correct answer. Come on, Jack. Yes, you did it. Get the kiss for that, doesn't see? <laughs> My congratulations to you, too, I tell you. You have beaten our jackpot clock, so let's see what you've won. Just take a look over here. It's Sylvania's 1954 Monticello, a triple treat combination in a superbly styled contemporary cabinet. The Monticello gives you a 21-inch TV console, AM, FM radio, an automatic three-speed record player. And behind that beautiful facade is Sylvania's new photo power chassis for brilliant clear tone pictures, which come to you through the eye-comforting frame of halo light. Mr. and Mrs. Helsel, you have really hit the jackpot with Sylvania's new Monticello console combination. It's all yours with our congratulations. And mine, too. Go right along with it. Happy hours for the new Sylvania television set. Get those girls from you, Bye. Well, Roxanne, whom do we have now? Bud, I'd like you to meet little Carol Ann and her brother Eugene and Mr. and Mrs. Gene Struznick. Struzik, right? right? From Stamford, Connecticut. Thank you very much, Mr. and Ms. Struzik. Welcome. Nice to have you here. S-T-R-U-Z-I-K. Is that right? Right, right, right? What do you do, Gene? Policeman. Sir. You're a policeman. Right. You're not down here officially, I trust. Oh, no. Good enough. What sort of a policeman are you? Do you... I'm a traffic patrolman. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> do you stand there or do you ride around and chase people? Well, I stand here in direct traffic. You do. Right. Do you ever get out of patience with some of these people that uh, go by uh, you in the daytime? Sometimes, but I try hard not to. It's not so easy, I guess, mm. is it, all the time? Well, let's talk to you youngsters here. How are you, young lady? Come on over here and talk to me, will you? Hi, shake hands. <gasps> Look at the pretty nails. Who put the polish on? My mother. Boy, that's mighty pretty, isn't it? Let me see your ring, too. That's lovely. Is that your birthstone? Mm -hmm. hmm? Yes. What month were you born in? February. And how old are you now? Six. You're six years old. Boy, you're six and a half, aren't you, huh? What are you going to be when you grow up? Hmm? Nurse. A nurse. Would like to practice on a Roxanne doll? Would you? Yeah. Roxanne, bring out one of those dolls, will you? Do you have one handy? There you are, honey. That's just for you. How do you like that? Her, her little camera flashes and everything. See that? And she walks, too. Roxanne will show you backstage after how to do that. You want to hold her? All right, that's for you. Now, how about you, young man? What's your name? Coming back, Jean, a sister. Uh, Jean, is that it? Are you Jean yeah. Jr.? Yes. Are you? And how old are you, son? Nine. Oh, you, you got a good solid grip on you there. What are you going to be when you grow up? I don't know yet. I might be a medical doctor and I might be a cop. Well, that's a parlay for you, isn't it, huh? Either one is good, son, I'll tell you. You can well be proud of that father of yours. Now, tell me, would you like one of these uh, Sylvania trucks we have here? Okay. It's a uh, okay, before we even get it out here, huh? The doors open and close. There's a little engine there. You see it in there, a little model of an engine? You'll have a lot of fun with that. Uh, we'll get one for you though, right backstage, right after you go off. Is that all right with you? Okay. All and right. I would like whipped cream in my father's face. You would what? You would like whipped cream in your father's face? Yes. I tell you, I don't know what we're doing to the youth of America, do you? <laughs> Gee. Well, I'll tell you what. Go to let your mother and your father have a little fun first here. So would you both come over here with me? And kids, you stand by there and watch what's going to happen. Now, Gene, if you'll step uh, right over here, the other right. side, the girls are going to kind of stuff you up. That's why we put that heavy sweater on you. They're going to stuff you full of, of volleyballs here. Going to put three in the front, three in the back. Get them all stuffed up there, that's the idea. Boy, I'm telling you, this is one kind of high here. He's got kind of chesty there. All right, now I'm gonna give you this pillow, see? Now, when I say go, you stand right here, sir, if you will. You can't help in any way by jumping around, but what a chest he's got on him, honey, though, I tell you. All I want you to do is holding this in one hand or two hands, any way you want to, I want you just to beat those balls out of that sweater. Do you understand? 
Beat them out till they fall right out. That's all you have to do. Take a look at the clock. See how many seconds you have. 50 seconds. Now, you can cover your face with your hands. Hold your head, be your hands with your head. I don't care what you do with them, but don't let your hands get in action here. Do you understand? Right. All right. Are you ready? Go. Come on, Mom. Let's go. That's it. Hit him. Hit him. Hey, look. slip right out of it. We'll toss it over to the girls and you won't have to worry about it anymore. Thank you very much, Madeline. All right, sir. Come on back. Hey, the bonus. You get to try the bonus. How about that? Well, come on over here now. Let's see what happens. All right, bring out our bonus props, if you will, please. Thank you very much, Betty. Now, here we are. Have you seen this? Have you watched it? Mm. You have? Well, it's, it's worth $500 in cash tonight, strictly as a bonus. Now, you take one in the left hand and one in the right hand. These are regular little pancake turners. Now, if I were to put these, one on that one like that, you could hold it there, couldn't you? And I could put this one on here, and you could hold oh, that there. Oh and that's what your problem is, is to get one on each of those, but you have to do it just by using the little spatulas. You can't do it by helping yourself in any other way. In other words, this one must pick up that cup, this one must pick up this cup, and you must be standing there holding the two cups in order to complete the stunt. You can't use this hand to help that one, or this to help that, nor your body in any way. Take a look at the clock, see how many seconds you have. 50 seconds and $500 riding order. Are you ready? Go. the clock. The clock beat you. I think it was just because you were shaking so. I think that's all it was. kind of too bad when you have to have balance, you know, it just, it just it makes you kind of tremble, and I'm sorry for that, because it does add an extra little handicap. Well, that was purely a bonus, you understand, and uh, incidentally, have you ever seen a volcano erupt, Gene? Yes. You have? Well, we have a volcano that's erupting, and we want you to do something about stopping it. What are you giggling for, Gene Jr.? I know it's going to be with crazy. Oh, you do, do you? Well, come on, Gene, you come over here with me. All right, come on over here, and let's bring out our special volcano set, if we may. There we are. Policeman Looks like just a... Beg pardon? A policeman, not a fireman. Oh, a policeman, not a fireman? You mean you, you wouldn't put out a fire if you saw one? Well, I wouldn't. Yeah, I thought you would. Well, step up here. The girls will show you all the equipment you need to put out this particular fire. And I want to show you that we've made what we hoped would look like a volcano. Actually, it looks like a bunker on the 14th green. But in any event, it's covered with green for those who can't see it. And uh, we're going to ask you to put that little protection on as well as this because we don't want any of that hot lava to get on you. Do you understand? Yeah, that's right. Here we are. Put the shower cap on. That's the boy. Now, this uh, volcano erupts right from these cones that are here, you see. And what you have to do to stop it is to drop those three marshmallows down in it because for some reason that stops the lava from flowing. I don't know why, but it does work. So when I say go, it'll start to erupt. You get over there and pick up those three marshmallows, but you can't use your hands. You have to pick each one up with your teeth and drop it down in there. Do you understand, right. Gene? When all three are down, one at a time, we'll stop the clock and you'll beat the clock. Let's take a look and see how many seconds you have. 30 seconds to stop that volcano. You ready? Go. Okay. All right, stop the clock. Good. <laughs> right, then, come on out here with one of your Sylvania flash bulbs with a blue dot for sure shot. And take a picture of it. <laughs> all right, we got a picture, we hope. And the girls will get you all cleaned up. You stay right there, sir. The girls are going to get you all cleaned up. We're going to come back over here. How was that, Gene Jr.? Fine. That's what you wanted, huh? 
Yes. I got a word of advice to you. Don't try it at home. That's... <laughs> All right, Mrs. Uh, Struzik, now you calm down again because now you have to carry on for the family. You're going to face the jackpot board right this minute. So if you'll step right back up on that little platform, the kids will stand over here with me. I want you to turn around and face the audience and don't turn back until I tell you to. And back of you now is our jackpot board with all the words of a famous saying or quotation on it, all mixed up. You get them unmixed, so they spell out the saying or quotation in 20 seconds from the time I say go. Now don't look till I tell you. Open the curtain. Turn around, take a look. the clock. Fools rush in. More angels there to trade is the right answer. You did it, Mrs. Cruzy. Nerves didn't bother you that time, did they? All right. Well, like your predecessor, you have beaten our jackpot clock, so let's see what you won. Just take a look over here. Mr. and Mrs. Cruzy, your prize also is Sylvania's new console combination for 54, the Monticello, featuring AM-FM radio, automatic three-speed record player, large 21-inch TV screen, and television's two greatest features, Sylvania's exclusive halo light and photo power performance. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Truzik. You have just won Sylvania's jackpot prize. My congratulations to you too, Mrs. Truzik. A great pleasure having you here tonight. Good night, son. Nice to have you, and good night, young lady. Enjoy your Roxanne doll. Now, Roxanne, whom do we have as our next contestant? Oh, what is this now? A put-up job? Madeline and Betty want to play Beat the Clock? No, but we'd like you to meet uh, Miss Fontana over here. Oh, we have visitors. How do you do, Miss Fontana? How are you? How do you do? It's a pleasure to meet well, you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. What do we owe this, all this beauty to? I mean, what is this all about? Uh, these are three girls from Rome. These are three models from Rome. Three models from Rome? Yes. Uh -huh. And they are here for the opening of the film, Italian film, that is called Three Girls from Rome. It's the opening of the Globe Theater. I see. It's, it's it. an Italian film that's opening here called Three Girls from Rome. Right. And why are you on our show tonight? Uh, they are here to give the present, this present to the um, American models. Oh, they're going to present something to our three models, our three girls? Right. Um, well, how, do they speak any English? They try to learn it. They want to say something, but they don't speak English. Oh. So they, we will see what they say. All right. Now, which one starts? Excuse All the way down here? All right. Excuse me. Uh, we... Three girls from Rome give it to the three girls from beat the, the clock. Beat the clock. Huh? <laughs> this gift from the model in of Italy to the models of New York. Oh, in other words, this is an award for the three girls, the three models from Italy are giving to the three models from New York. It <laughs> says on there, three girls from Rome to the New York fashion models and beat the clock. Well, isn't that wonderful? And our girls, I think uh, we're awful proud to have you have that statue of Venus. And uh, how do you say thank you in Italian? Grazie. Grazie. Girls, are you ready? Grazie. Very nicely done. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you with us. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, Roxanne, who do we have as our next contestant? Now we have but Mr. and Mrs. Robert Townsend from Rock Hall, Maryland. Thank you very much, Roxanne. Mr. Townsend, welcome. And Mrs. Townsend, a warm welcome to you. What do you do, Bob? I'm a, a dairy farmer. A dairy farmer. You have your own place, do you? No, I work for my father. Oh, you do. And uh, how long has he had this farm? Well, he's been farming for a many years. He has. You both married four and a half years. I've seen you have two boys. That's well, right. we'll have two of those uh, Sylvania trucks for you to take along home to them. Is that okay? Millions of people... We're about to start off Mr. and Mrs. Robert Townsend of Rock Hall, Maryland on the $100 clock. Bob, would you come over here with me, please? Now, over here we have a card table, you see? Now, uh, would you step around here, please? Now, right here, it's very simple matter to just push this down and fold that leg up. Would you hold that corner now so it doesn't fall? That's, you can use both hands if you want to. Now, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to place this ball on this table when I say go. And from there on, it is up to you, without letting that ball roll off the table, to fold up all the other legs and wind up holding the table with all the legs folded up. Got the idea? You can leave the three on the floor and balance it with one on the floor if you want to, or pick the whole table up, do any way you want to. You understand? But you must not drop the ball. If you drop the ball, we have to open up three legs again and start over. Take a look and see how many seconds you have. 55 seconds. Are you ready? Go. I'll show you how this works. Wait a minute. Stop the clock a minute. That one kind of stuck, is this one, Bob? Yeah, there we are. All right. 
So we'd start you with that one start part way down because it was jammed. All right, here we go. You ready? Go. Roll off. We're going to see if you have as steady a hand because he's beaten the $100 clock. Let's find out the problem on the $200 clock, and it's yours, Mrs. Townsend. Would you come over here with me? Uh, are you right-handed or left-handed? Right. You're right-handed, all right? I'm going to give you this mirror. I ask you to hold it in your left hand, if you will. Now, do you mind if we put a little sort of a platform on your head right over your little hat? It doesn't matter, does it? All right. There we go. Now, that's your little platform, see, up there, like a hat almost. Now, what you have to do is this. You have to pick up these three cups, one at a time, and balance them on that little platform. So all three of them are standing there unheld by you. Do you understand? Take a look in the mirror. You can see how it's perched up there. Go ahead. Look right in there. So you can see yourself. Get the idea? That's the idea. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a glove to put on. Got the glove on? Okay. Now take a look at the clock. See how many seconds you have. 55 seconds, one at a time. Get all three up there. Are you ready? Go. turn to try our jackpot clock. Bob, if you stand down over there and don't help in any way, Mrs. Townsend, step up on the platform, face the audience, and back of you is our jackpot clock. All the words of a famous saying or quotation are there, but they're all mixed up. Move them around until they spell out the saying or quotation we're after in 20 seconds. Don't look till I tell you to. Open the curtain. Turn around, take a look. the clock the clock beats you it has to be if winter comes can spring be far behind can spring be far behind there we are if winter comes can spring be far behind well you've done all right come on back down here because you have beaten our two hundred dollar clock so let's see what you've won a newly styled mohawk carpet in the coventry pattern elegant in design your room size carpet is woven for beauty and long-lasting wear and a deep three surface scroll effect Truly, carpet craftsmanship from the looms of Mohawk. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Townsend. You've just won a Beat the Clock prize worth more than $200. My congratulations to you, too. It's awfully nice having you with us tonight. Good night. Roxanne, whom do we have now? Bud, we have Mr. and Mrs. Gail Nurnberger from Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you very much. Hi, Mrs. Nurnberger. How are you? Nice. Gail, uh, Gail, is it? G-A-L-E? Right, right, nice to have you here with us. How long have you been in the Navy? About 10 years. About 10 years. Have you really? Boy, you put in a long time. That's a career with you, I take it. Is that right? Uh-huh. Well, we're going to find out uh, very shortly what your problem is on our $100 clock here. You have four girls? Yes. Bless my soul. How old are they? Uh, six, five, one is... Four years old today. Oh. And 14 months. Well, we're going to have four Roxanne dolls for you to take home. You're going to be loaded. Here's Mike Connors with how you... Come on, let's get over here and see what we have. It's for you, Gail, if you don't mind coming over here. Do you ever catch butterflies? 
No, sir. You got butterflies in your stomach right now, I bet, haven't you? Just, just a few. <laughs> well, here's a butterfly net for you. And I'm going to put it right down here on the floor, if you don't mind. And we have a supply of butterflies in here, which are balloons. And the air is clipped in by one of these spring clips. Oh. I mean, our time is all gone. Can you come back next week? Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you what you have to do. You're going to have to trap these things by letting them go like that, see? And if you can catch one of those next week, you'll be doing all right. Believe me, we'll see you next week. You'll be our first contestant on Beat the Clock. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bud Collier speaking for Sylvania, hoping that next time may be your time to Beat the Clock. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Totten production, produced in association with the CBS Television Network. Roxanne John by Larry Ulrich. Beat the Clock is brought to you by Sylvania. And this is Vern Bennett reminding you to tune in every week at the same time for Beat the Clock.